that's what they taught us back in elementary school. <laughs> Grew up in Fort Defiance during the school year and I was sent to Samal Nas area where my grandparents had cattle for the summer. And I guess my Navajo started with the commands. Kind of really simple commands and you know when your grandparents bust out the Navajo, you know it's gonna get real. <laughs> my parents never really forced it upon me, like never really in, not in view. They, they didn't really teach me Navajo as much as I feel they could have. Uh, these days I am an adult so it's now it's my responsibility to learn on my own as opposed to uh, my parents should have taught me. Like, okay, now it's my responsibility. I'm an adult now. Um, I grew up in Fort Defiance and then I went to middle school and my first year of high school was within Winter Rock High School District. I was fortunate enough to receive a full-blown scholarship to go to a preparatory school out in the East Coast. And then I went to Yale after I graduated from Lakeville. And at the time that I was graduating, the Albuquerque film industry was really, really growing. And I did my research on, or I did my senior thesis research on Native American self-representation and the growing film, Native film industry, and Albuquerque seemed like the prime place to go. So when I graduated, I picked Albuquerque to live. I am very certain that you grew up with that same song, that go my son, go and climb the ladder. And there's one lyric that says, go get an education and come back and help your Indian nation. But yeah, um, it's, it was pounded into us as kids, I believe our generation, where you go out to the you go out to the white man's world, you get their education, then you come back and help us. I think, yeah, when we leave the reservation, that's when we start developing a sense of who we are as individuals, as opposed to a part of a community. I feel like there is a balance that has to be found between the person, the self, and the community. At the time, I didn't like it, but now I really, really fondly remember it. Um, herding cattle with my grandparents, butchering sheep, catching sheep, yeah, <laughs> woolly riding and all that fun stuff. Yeah, a fair. <laughs> <laughs> my grandma's hogan. It's where I had my hajonje. It's where whenever I asked for a meeting from my mom, from my stepdad, they would host it there. And right in front. Probably like about a football field away, there's a, a cliff. And it's on top of Salmon Hill. Hey, Benina, that's why we always get Kanshin. <laughs> but, um, yeah, every time after a meeting's done, like when you go and greet out the sun, when you go and greet out the dawn, and hi, Kastine, you could see the entire Salmon Valley. It's, it's gorgeous, especially in winter when snow covers the ground and there's always um, evergreen trees. So it's like white, like a white carpet with green, and then there's mesas in the background. And there's not a telephone, well there used to be not a telephone line in sight, so it's just nature. I feel imbalanced. And, you know, a lot of Navajo philosophy is about finding balance. And I believe it's because I, I'm educated in the, I'm educated in the Western sense. But I do not have the education from Hatashis, from Chiche, Shemasana, Shinele. I don't have their stories because there's a certain way of thinking in Navajo. English, you have your sentence, which consists of a subject, verb, and whatever. The subject takes precedence. In Navajo, I'm not going to flip you off, so. <laughs> in Navajo, it's the verb that takes precedence. So, you shift from the 
egological thinking of the person is the most important thing to a huge vast differently shift into the verb is the most important part the doing is more important than the person so that's why I want to go back to the res is to regain that balance between Western philosophy with Navajo philosophy because I'm out of balance Akonehigi, when you say harmony, harmony and balance are the same one, and beauty, because harmony, balance, and beauty are interchangeable in Navajo. And if I'm ever to regain my sense of balance, I have to learn these stories, I have to learn my language, and that's the only way I can regain my sense of beauty, my sense of harmony again. Hey guys, how are you doing? Uh, my name is Brian Young. Yatesh A. Brian Young in a Though I just want to give a quick shout out to Ryan Begay. Please support his project to walk in beauty again. Uh, we have some amazing stories to tell and to document, and we got some questions to ask. God, that was terrible. <laughs>